the body movements are controlled by muscles. While contracting, the muscle is reduced in length and joins closer the two bones on which it's inserted. However, it's the nervous system that controls the muscle contraction by the means of nerves. Each nerve contains thousands of nerve fibers arranged in dendrites which carry out sensory information and axons that convey motor impulses. Each motor neuron innervates several muscle fibers. This association defines what is called a motor unit. In general, the fewer the muscle fibers are in a motor unit, the more the movement is precise. For example, in the temporalis muscle, there are a thousand muscle fibers per motor unit. While in the external ocular muscle, there are only five. This reflects the accuracy of the eye movements. The intensity of the muscle contraction is proportional to the number of motor units recruited. A single motor neuron gives several endings that sometimes scatter throughout the thickness of a muscle. Each ending is intended to stimulate a single muscle fiber in a specific place, the neuromuscular junction. Just before the axon terminal, the neuron loses its myelin sheath and forms a terminal button. The terminal button contains many mitochondria that provide energy and several synaptic vesicles. Each vesicle contains approximately 10,000 of acetylcholine molecules, the unique neurotransmitter of the neuromuscular junction. On the side of the muscle fiber, we find the motor end plate, which is the area directly opposite to the terminal button. The motor end plate, thick and electrically non-excitable, forms folds that increase the volume of the synaptic cleft. Although these two regions are very close to each other, there is no real contact between them. Once it reaches the nerve terminal, the motor impulse causes the opening of calcium channels, triggering an influx of calcium ions inside the cell. The calcium ions promote the fusion of acetylcholine vesicles with the cell membrane, releasing their full content of this neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine molecules diffuse then towards the other side to cholinergic receptors accumulated mainly in the folds.
the binding of two acetylcholine molecules to one receptor causes the opening of a sodium channel that facilitates the entry of sodium ions in the interior of the muscle fiber. This depolarizes the membrane and creates motor and plate potential. Depending on the number of activated receptors, that potential may exceed a threshold and trigger a muscle action potential which will broadcast to the entire muscle membrane and cause a contraction of the muscle fiber. The acetylcholine molecules are rapidly destroyed by an enzyme acetylcholinesterase present in the synaptic cleft. This lysis will give two molecules of acetate and choline which joins the nerve endings to help form new molecules of acetylcholine. The rapid destruction of acetylcholine allows avoiding the prolongation of muscle contraction. There may be a small release of acetylcholine by spontaneous exocytosis in the synaptic cleft without any nerve stimulation. However, the number of activated receptors is far from triggering a muscle action potential. A motor unit consists of a neuron and all the muscle fibers it innervates. The neuromuscular transmission occurs at the neuromuscular junction that has a terminal button, nervous element, and motor end plate which is a muscular element. When the nerve impulse reaches the terminal button, it causes an influx of calcium ions inside the cell. The calcium ions promote the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the plasma membrane, thereby releasing their content of acetylcholine. The acetylcholine molecules bind to their receptor at the end plate and causes an influx of sodium ions within the cell. This creates an end plate potential, which triggers a muscle action potential and induces a muscle contraction. The acetylcholine molecules are rapidly degraded by acetylcholinesterase to avoid the prolongation of muscle contraction. <laughs>